following is a Buffalo City Life podcast. If you're interested in showcasing your podcast on our network, write to info at buffalocitylife.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and head over to buffalocitylife.com to check out other podcasts. Thank you for listening, and now on to the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Second Review. I'm your host Kaiba, with the one and only Jay Zippo at the corner. Hi, Jay. What's up, man? Woo! The full tilt. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And for the second time in a week. Holy shit! I know, right? The Bill of Rights <laughs> has decided to show up. Hey, Kaiba. Hey, Ninjutsu. That's not my name. <laughs> no, he, he isn't Ninjutsu anymore. He is now going by his Japanese sumo name of. Fujimoto. No, we Fujimoto. never agreed to this. Anyways, guys, today, Gamescom is going on this whole week in Germany, and holy fuck, is there a shit ton of stuff to talk about. Also, Jay Zippo, down there in the corner, you, you got Half-Life story. Yeah, I do. Right? I do. Half-Life 3, something's going down. Yeah, it's not the happy story, so it's no fuzzy feelings on this one. Uh, I want fuzzy feelings. Full tilt, what do you got for me? <clears throat> right. I uh, got you some... Uh, Up-to-date news on the International Dota 2 Championships, so that way you guys know exactly how well nerddom can go as far and how much money you could win if you basically stayed in your parents' uh, house for 18 hours a day. In other words, to everybody out there, why he decided to fill it in? Because I feel Dota 2 is stupid. (laughs) Agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Bill of Rights. Wow. You got to play League of Legends. The government's (laughs) working. And also for our kind of review this week, we're going to be doing... Or at least Bill Wrights is going to be filling us in with Windows 10's Minecraft beta. Yeah, uh, Windows 7, Windows 10 just came out, and with it, the Minecraft beta version of it. It's uh, kind of a whole new ball game, and uh, I'm going to go over the pros and the cons of all that. So, should be interesting. Sweet. I can't wait. <laughs> all right, well, let's kick this story off. I want to be able to slip my wrist now with Half-Life 3. Jay Zippo, please, what is going on with this game? So when someone asks you Kev, that, you know, hey, do you want the good news or the bad news first? You always go for the bad news, don't you? Oh, God, yes. Class half empty. Oh. Gotcha. All right. I, you know, I want to be happy at the end of everything. Is so. this glass just completely empty? Yeah, there's a few drops in there. Maybe some backwash of dead fly. Um, Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, it, it's, it's not... Anyone in the uh, gaming circles knows that... Uh, Half-Life 3 is like one of the biggest stigmas. It's like the game everyone's kind of waiting for because 1 and 2 was awesome and amazing and sold like crazy. So everyone's been waiting for Half-Life 3. Um, so it's, it's been reported. And it was, uh, the story was broke by uh, its a news, news uh, channel on YouTube called The No. And uh, they broke the story in regards to Half-Life 3 is no longer in development. What? No longer in (laughs) development. Are you serious? So I'm just going to go over a few bits of information here, and then we can chit-chat a little bit more about it. Um, So they reported that they had an inside source that said that there's 10 people currently working on Half-Life 3. Um, And that is just to tie up loose ends and make sure nothing's hanging around. And then probably by the end of the year, no one's going to be working on it. Um... They also said that the script was complete, but uh, one of the uppers in uh, Valve, Mark Laidlaw, said that that's incorrect. They had some ideas out there, like finalized ideas, but the script itself isn't actually created until the end of the game, which I found interesting. Like, when people develop games, I always assume that they have a script, like this script and everything ready to go. And I guess that's not really true. I, I guess they, like, build a game and then do all the, uh, you know, the gameplay, make sure it's right, and then they start adding in the script, which I, I just found fascinating. Anyways. So, in other words, you're telling me that's like a Woody Allen movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, Half-Life, I don't even know. Was there, in Half-Life 2, was there any boobies? 
You know, I've actually never played Half Life Two. I just played Half Life One. Were there any boobies in Half Life One? There weren't. They no. were not. Okay, so it wouldn't be a p- Woody Allen movie. Yeah. Oh. It's still an awesome <laughs> game. I, I would figure that you know, with your titty radar, you would know. <laughs> I know. Would, you're game? right. Right. You know, it's like, where are they? Okay, so here's here's a couple other uh, facts for you. In 2005, they had over a hundred people developing Half Life Three. Um, since then, it has dwindled, obviously, down to 10, and now it's going to be to nothing at the end of the year. One of the main reasons behind it is the Bioware release of Mass Effect 3. The mm. ending of that game... Pissed had so many people off. Just flipping their gourd, which makes no sense to me. It's a goddamn video game. Yeah, be a little mad, whatever, uh. move on with life, but... It was like this onslaught of thing. And even though Bioware pretty much could probably crap in a box and sell 5 million copies of it, still, it was something that, you know, they took notice of because Valve not only develops games, they have an extremely successful publishing platform. If something would happen that they put out Half-Life 3 and it, it was a shit bomb, that would affect everything. From top to bottom, bottom line, and people would probably be moving away from them. I'm not saying everyone, but it would definitely be a hit to them. So I think that was part of the reason why they're just not, you know. So know. they're stopping while they're ahead. Right, and they don't want to, like, put themselves out there. So the other thing behind that is uh, Valve is a private company. They're, mm-hmm. they're not public, so they can pretty much do whatever they want. So there's no board member telling, hey, you got to produce this, you got to make all that. They don't. They do what they want. Why so that, that's a good. huge factor in this. Because, here we go. Here's some stats for you. This is the stuff that just blows my mind. Okay, so Valve has three free-to-play microtransaction games right now. Okay. That has earned them over $400 million in 2014. How much? Four, no, this isn't just, this is like clearing. This is like all bills paid, $400 million. Everything above the line. Four hundred million dollars they made. Four hundred million Why in the, the green. Why the hell am I not there? What are these games? Uh, it's TF2, Dota 2, and then there was this Clear oh, Dota. 3 or something like that. The game that's so uninteresting that I didn't <laughs> want to announce it today. So, and then they also get, and I'm going to add this in, 30% cut on every game sold on Steam. So that's their third party. Um, that ends up being $330 million cleared. We are looking at $730 million that these people made, this company, Valve, made without any issues. Everyone loves their free-to-play games. They are on top of the world. So why would they go ahead and try and do this? So uh, technically speaking, it would probably take them around $300 million probably to make this game, including promotion and stuff like that. So we're going to say $300 million to do it. If they sold 12 million copies... Mm-hmm. They would roughly get seven hundred and ten million dollars. So you take out the it's only about maybe four hundred million they would make out of that. Just that game. But then it's not like where the free to plays, that's four hundred million a year because they're always paying I mean it's continually going. It's not like one game, you finish it, you're done. And this is why you're not seeing good games come from good developers anymore. Right. Free to play is just a better business model. Way better. It's easier and it's long. It's much long term, and you also don't have to start producing all these. Uh, which <laughs> I know you guys are huge uh, Destiny fans, so saying the word. You're really gonna ask me that right now? <laughs> uh, can I denied my y'all whore, <laughs> <laughs> Bungie? My birthday is tomorrow. Please, for the love of God, give me a yali. That's all I want, man. So I, I guess the bottom line is with this, they, they, they're in no rush to do it. And I think they've just said, all right, let's just put this on the shelf till gamers decide to use their brain again. That and, won't happen. Right, but you never know. You know, it was, you know, 20 years ago, it was a totally different era. And then even just 10 years ago, where did you get your gaming news? You got it at the at the store, at the, the you know, the newsstand. Yeah, That's where you got it. pieces, magazines. PC gamer. PC you gamer never heard, game. you never heard some guy in California on Reddit going, oh, you suck, monkey balls, you bugger. You know, you don't, you never saw that. I'm sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, Not surprised. it's a totally different um, atmosphere. And I, I, you know, maybe it will change again. Maybe in five years it'll change again. They'll say, hey, Let's fire up this Half-Life 3. But as, as of now, it's dead. It's just not going to happen. 
any time soon. All right, so what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go slip my wrist in the bathroom <laughs> right now. So while I'm doing that... I'll play some taps for you. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, I I'll won't. I'll play some taps on my dead body. Yes, I will. <laughs> All right, full tilt. Give us some Dota news. Why should I give a crap? <laughs> All right, there's a couple of good reasons why you should give a crap. I mean... Six million good reasons. Yeah, six, <laughs> six million. And six I'm gonna, million? I'm going to get into this. I'm going to get into this. For no, people who no, don't... You know what? Who? No, before I go slip my wrist. No, I'm going to go... Over here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking retards who live in their parents' basements should not be making $6 million off of playing a fucking video game. I'm sorry. Y- no. You're, you're you are salty today, man. Yes, you are yes, just he, fired he, up. He is. He is. I, I haven't well, drank yet. D- just so you guys know, Dota 2 is basically like, think about like World of Warcraft combined with like maybe like League of Legends or something of that sort. And it's like, I, I've actually personally never played it. I just enjoy watching the gameplay and like how cool it just looks because I don't think I could get can into I, it. Can I give you a little background, a little history Yes, interject here. for me for this because you've probably played these games before. When Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 got onto Battle.net, a new series of maps showed up. They were called Defense of the Ancients, thus Dota. And they uh. became, they were a special map where you had to push from one end to the other. And uh, eventually, uh, people were hoping that the StarCraft II would be able to, you know, they'd be able to transfer Dota over there. But when they tried to do it, it was pretty, uh, it didn't work well for them. So they finally, you know, all these other ones were coming out. League of Legends was coming out. Heroes of Norath was coming out. All these other pushers were coming out. And they finally decided, okay, you know what, we're going to split away from the Warcraft II, uh, Warcraft Three engine and we're going to just make our own. It's going to be Dota 2. So that is actually where Dota 2 came from. Okay, and besides all that. I didn't know that. Yeah, besides that was actually decently interesting, and I still <laughs> wouldn't play that game regardless. It's decently interesting on that. It was, it was decently, decently structured. In- Thank you very much yes, for your I, input. I do appreciate that. Here's why I'm so... Reads hang like on, a bill on, of on, rights. Back here. <laughs> that is the only time you'll ever hear a full tilt say something intelligent in a full, <laughs> complete sentence oh, for the rest of the night. All right, All right, so minus the fact, this is why I wanted to cover this, because I this blew my mind, because what's going on is people, these, these 16, uh, 16 teams of five are playing a video game over the span of a week, and... This is the prize money, the total prize money they can win. $18,224,017. That's the current prize pool. This number actually goes up based on sales, promotions, and, and whatnot. That's yep. my understanding. So as of right now, when they win this competition, these teams, first place gets $6,560,646. And it's a five-person team, so that's over a million a person. That's over a million a person. So just think about it this way. Playing video games and getting a million bucks to do this, and if you're that good doing this year after year after year, where do I sign up? Plus they get sponsorships. And they get sponsorships. Look at this. Even the 16th place person gets money. $54,672. Divide that up by five people. Yeah, that's still over $1,000 just to play a video game. That's, to be and, honest, though, they have to. It isn't like they just sign up for it and they go. I mean, you get like you get like a billion tournaments before you actually get to that point. You have to be the top of the top of the top of the top of the oh. top to be able to get to this kind of tournament. Okay, so it's, it's so not like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go sign up tomorrow and be in there. You have no, to, like, you, sponsor. you yeah. have to be yeah, sponsored. To, okay. My understanding is these guys are so ridiculously good at playing this game. That, like, and they're not all Korean. And they're Yeah, they're not all Asian, <laughs> actually, which is very weird, you know. But, like, you know, I see, like, all these different things. And I think this is such an interesting thing because eSports, this comes down to, like, eSports and, like, you know, this is the first time I really noticed. I mean, I've heard of Dota 2 before. I've never actually watched it. This is the first time I've actually physically streamed lo- streamed it and watched it on my computer while working. And, <laughs> and it, w- it was actually fantastic to see that, you know, there's these kids who put a lot of dedication into this. It's kind of like watching an NFL game in its own right. And there's so much payout to go involved. It's not just simply saying, hey, get off that video game anymore. It's like... That's a lot of money for one for a first prize pool of six and a half mil split up between five people. That's ridiculous. Like, I can only imagine what Call of Duty might be doing or any other type of like competitive gameplay with their own set of style tournaments and how much money they probably make off of it. I it's, just also wanted to add one thing, just kind of to think about our last week episode, Game Changers. Hello. That was essentially what that is about. That's somebody who competitively played video games and made all this money and did all did amazing things. So 
that is that is true to form right here. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. real life, man. Mm -hmm. Back then, maybe it was a hundred thousand. Now, because Valve is has more money than God. It's 18 million. 18, <laughs> yeah, 18, 18, 18 million. I don't really think that Call of Duty has anything out there, but I know Counter Strike. Counter Strike's still pretty strong, right, in esports. Um, we have Counter Strike. Uh, League of Legends is still pretty big. I, don't, I haven't seen any six million dollar pools or anything like that, but uh, they're going pretty strong. StarCraft's still pretty strong in Korea. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of esports out there worth playing still. Yeah, right now they almost have <clears throat> for. Their bracket that I'm looking at here, they already have the one side of their semifinals almost already decided, and then they're all working on towards the other end of it. But basically, it's almost dwindled down to the last four teams here that's about to enter in the semifinals here. And then the grand finals would basically be a best out of five match, you know. So, like, I, the question remains, I mean, I've been watching these matches, and, you know, they, they're, they're kind of long, but they're kind of not, depending on the strategies they use and whatnot. They, so I've seen a match go so quickly, like, you know, within, you know, 15 minutes or so, and then I've seen ones go a lot longer based on just people's outstanding gameplay. And then the fact that they use this talent to their, you know, to, as a sport, and then they get recognized for this is a huge deal, you know. So that's why I found this International Dota 2 Championships pretty, like, interesting because the amount of money you make and, like, the dedication that must go into this game. Kai, but you're looking at me like you have something to say, so please speak your mind. <laughs> no, I actually found it interesting, but I just figured it, if I could sit in my parents' basement for, like you were saying, 18 hours a day and then end up going to a tournament, make all this money, imagine the poontang you can get after that. Yeah, Is this in Las Vegas or what? <laughs> yeah. Of course. This ain't no Vegas. Is, is this no, in Vegas? In Seattle, or is this? I believe. Uh, no, this is actually, and if I'm not mistaken, Seattle. Seattle? Yeah. I've been to Seattle. Seattle, this is in I'm Seattle. Seattle socks. I'm put it this way. You make a million bucks out of this thing. So do the Seahawks. Put You're on. still considered a nerd who lives in your parents' basement. Yep. You ain't getting no shit. Yeah, if I'm I'm carrying around a huge pocket of a million bucks, yeah, I'm gonna get some stuff. You know, you'd be surprised though. A lot of these kids, like you, you look at them, you think they'd all be like fat, like large. No, a lot no, of them not. are really skinny. Like I don't well, know. Yeah, because they don't eat. <laughs> well, yeah, good point. They spend 18 like, hours a day playing video games and forget to eat. Yeah, yeah but well, like still, happen. you know, the fact is that it's very talented. Like I can't, I probably won't be able to pick up that game and then get really good at it. No, and, you won't. No, because <laughs> it's, it, it looks complicated. And the fact is that it takes an intelligent, <laughs> it, 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 it defines a different type of athleticism for this Dota 2 yes. because it's not like physical athleticism, it's mental athleticism. And yep. that's what it most likely comes down to, which is something good to and see. And this is coming from a man, everybody, that believes that NASCAR is actually a sport. It's actually proven. Well, it, it yes, is. proven. It's not a NASCAR one, is not a sport. Is. Yes, it is. I can yes, go to the highway and watch the same shit. Oh, it's too <laughs> much. That would be a sport. I don't know. Just watch moving. the on and off ramp. <laughs> it's the same yeah. thing. Cars go on and around. Right, let's keep moving around. around. Because <laughs> this one is going to be a huge effing deal. Gamescom. Holy shit. And this is in Germany, right? And this is in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where in Germany, do you know? I don't know. Nine. Nine. Ten. Nine. Schmorgisborg. Right, so if thought, anybody that here believes German. that, you know, and raise your hands, obviously nobody can see us, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> raise, a show of hands, who <laughs> believes that Microsoft fucked it up at E3 this year? Hands? One, two. I didn't see it. I don't know, whatever. I don't think they did great, but I didn't think they fucked it up. I thought they were fairly mediocre. Dull. Yeah, they were same concept, same category. Uh, they were mediocre. What did they it up would have been Nintendo. Nintendo what, screwed what it up. What did they introduce this year? Do I want to start with this the big Microsoft, one? This is Microsoft, right? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to start with the big one? Yeah, let's start with the big one. Oh, like, oh, at least That's to what me, she guys, said. The, this is the big one. <laughs> Halo Wars 2. Ooh, yeah. Halo Wars 2 got announced just actually last night. I didn't even night. like Halo Wars 1. Halo, you don't know? I, I don't know, I played it. I didn't yeah. like it. You didn't like it? I loved it. I thought it was really cool. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing more of this. But, you know, trail. if anything, the trailer is, it looked amazing. So I'm going to go with that. The other thing they showed off is pre-alpha footage, which I don't even know how that's possible, of Scalebound. Never heard of Scalebound. What is that? Scalebound is kind of like Microsoft, almost like their version of Dragon Guard for the PlayStation. Oh, really? You, know, you fly around a dragon. Dragon helps you out. You know, just basically wrecking house, burning shit to death. Like Skyrim with the downloaded content. Because yeah, you can get yeah. on your dragon and yeah, that tear was, some shit yeah, up. <laughs> Skyrim's the best. Right. The other thing that they showed off today, uh, 
Now, believe it or not, Killer Instinct, especially Killer Instinct 2, is starting to get some crazy ass shit going. To just yesterday, they announced Rash from the Battle Toads is coming. That'll actually be pretty cool because, like, I'd like to see how they're going to incorporate I know Rash I into this game. <laughs> like, does it come with a cream finisher? What? Stage three. <laughs> is it really called stage? <laughs> 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 called stage three. I would have been blown away <laughs> by that actually. <laughs> but yeah, they showed off Rash, and uh, he looks as epic as you'd think. Really? Mm-hmm. And the other thing that Microsoft's coming out with that made me uh, kind of perk my ears up and think about getting an Xbox. What? 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 what, what, what? Yeah, yeah. He's, I know, right? The what? 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 Stroke <laughs> happened, didn't it? Right there. <laughs> I'm fl- flabbergasted. <laughs> Free DVR service. Oh, that's right. That's that not. you can stream on any Xbox and any Windows 10 device. Nice. That's actually pretty good. I'm not gonna so lie. DVR free. Free. Free DVR. Free DVR for your cable? Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't. Have cable, <laughs> nor will well, I ever have fault. cable. But see, there's this that's thing called Netflix, and there's the internet. And Hulu. Wait, what? I have I have infinite DVR. It's called the cloud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, for the people that are as me. intelligent as you, I told you that. <laughs> free DVR, guys. That's gonna be really cool. The other thing I want to pull up is there's more information about Fallout 4. That's really kind of got my ears going, too. So wait a second. And Microsoft, you said that you felt that they did horrible, that they fell on their faces. I didn't say they fell on their face. I just said they sucked ass at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so what was so bad about <laughs> That's it? That's the same thing in my book. Okay. So what was so bad about it? You said you, you named I off a bunch of things you're looking it. forward to. I just don't think at E3 they brought it. No. You know, it's like, it, it kind of reminds me of last year's E3 when basically Microsoft came out, they sucked ass, and then... Sony followed suit and just basically spanked them into oblivion. Who followed suit on Microsoft this time? Well, let me just... Well, it, for this there. E3, though, Yeah. We, the, it was a very unique one, obviously. But um, everyone kind of was down a little bit because, I'm sorry, Bethesda knocked it out of the park the day before. Oh, they, they set the standard and no one got close. PlayStation did very well. It got close. But there's no way that anyone was going to touch Bethesda. Right. Anyway, right. back to my Fallout <laughs> 4 rant. Sorry. Go on. Okay. Follow four. What do you think? What do you think about the game never ends? Hmm. Terrible. That's because you're an anti-Semitic bastard. No, it's because I believe that every good every story should have a good ending, and it should like end. No, no, no. Because okay, so you're telling me like let's say today, right now, is your epic, epic mission, epic story. It ends today, and the game and it just ends. You nothing can't play co- anymore. Nothing follows. You can't play anymore. And then you move on to the next. Then you game. move on to the next one. You get you when you oh, have get an out e- of here. when you get, have an ending. Get out of here. When you have an ending, you bring closure to oneself. Yeah, but now at this point, he's not saying that it's just going to be wide open. You will close out quests and stuff. Yeah. But that gives you the option to say, okay, well, I beat the main quest. Now I'm going to go beat Whoa. off to my anime. But you also <laughs> have then you have the option to move on and continue doing all these other things that you want. It's not that you have to. But yeah. they give you the option to do that. I guess that. I, it depends. If it's something like Final Fantasy X, where they have a system where you can basically level up as much as you want, but eventually you fill up, all, you've already maxed out all your skills, you've already selected all your orbs, like you, everything's maxed out and you really can't go any farther, and you can keep on leveling if you want to, but what's the point? Right. If it's something like that, then fine. But if it's something where like there is literally infinite skill... And the bad guys just keep on getting more difficult, and you keep on getting more powerful, and it's just a gigantic arms race. I think that would get pretty old pretty quick. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you take the fun out of my next announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Jeez, the government Spill screwed me over again. The Flake Gate 2. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Fallout 4 will be you know, introducing infinite leveling. So as the Bill of Rights decided to do what every piece of government legislation does, screw over everybody. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) He just screwed over for everybody else. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Anytime. All right. right. I just want to bring up one more thing. And to me, this is near and dear to my heart. Just Cause 3. Yeah. That looks cool. Is that the article you were telling me where it's like introducing even more insanity or something like that? Oh, oh, yeah. Upgrading insanity or something. Oh, yeah. (laughs) See, and if anybody out there has played Just Cause 1 wait, and 2, and if you haven't... Wait, pl- is Just Cause that game where you're like the cop with the superpowers? No, that's Crackdown, ah. which that actually got announced too. Crackdown okay. 3 showed off some new footage today. 
Anyways, back to Just Cause. So if anybody out there has played Just Cause 1 and 2, God, I've played one actually. Span this week. You know, every, it, it's just about crazy. Just being crazy. I mean, if you want to jump on the, the hood of your jet while it's flying at Mach 3, which is, you know, unrealistic, you can sit there you and... <laughs> just a little bit. I do that every day yeah, on my way to work. I'm late I for I work. I flying today. <laughs> but, no, you can sit there and jump on the hood of your fighter jet and just sail in the sky. And then when you feel like jumping off, look it, jump off. Yeah, but won't you die when you hit the ground? Or parachute. Let me guess. Parachute. Wingsuit. Wingsuit. You get a wingsuit this time. Like Bond. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they also. Thinking Hawkwing. <laughs> they're also allowing you to keep your cars. That was a big oh, thing cool. with Just Cause too. Is like once you fuck up the car, it's fucked up. It's gone. Right. But now what you can do is every time you liberate a specific area, like an outpost, air quotes, you can now have a garage where you can store these cars. Well, that's nice. Very nice. And you can modify them now. Hmm. There you go. So just think about it. If you play Just Cause 2 and adding nitros to every car, yeah, that's <laughs> Just Cause 3 now. <laughs> the, this game is leading up to you literally having epileptic seizures. Oh. Okay, Sign that, me up. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> I know, right? What do I, what do I buy? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I want to bring up is, and don't kill me for this, Destiny's Taken King oh got new information released today. Well, technically yesterday in Germ- Germany, but new to us today. The raid in this upcoming expansion is going to be the biggest yet. So more than an hour then. Well, that'll be nice. I hope it's more than 20 <laughs> minutes if, if some of these times are correct on the internet. But they're saying it's going to be bigger than both the raids combined that are currently available. Oh, that'd be interesting, because didn't that one guy beat the Crota raid in, like, 11 minutes to season one hunter? Well, that's because he's a hunter that's broken. <laughs> it's very true, very true. <laughs> but, but uh, on top of that, it's going to be introducing another, kind of like Prison of Elders, called the Court of Oryx. Oh. Where it's going to constantly be shifting, so it's not going to be predictable. So they're going to throw in random bosses with random objectives and a random map. All see, the time, I don't like so that. Are they gonna do it like a like a giant like hive version of a coliseum where you there's this hive in the in the <laughs> in the, the, in the stands watching you as you get <laughs> slaughtered by more hive? <laughs> see, I, I see, I don't like that. I, I like the idea of in Prison of Elders when you get to thirty five, you know what's gonna happen, and so you can plan for it and you can start building your strategy around it. I don't like the idea that it could be random and then out of nowhere. Like one week or one day you could go in and all of a sudden you get a really easy combination and you blast through it and go, oh, look, I beat it. And this other person who doesn't seem to be able to get that combination just keeps on banging his head against the wall, you know? Uh, Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does sound familiar. All right. So oh, I, I also heard some other news about the, the Taken King. I heard they were actually going to kiss you when they bend you over when you buy <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe even buy a little Maybe dinner. Maybe a little reach around. <laughs> a little slap and tickle, <laughs> you, just, you know? That would explain the picture I saw from Bungie the other day. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. It, it looked like a baseball bat with studs all around oh, it. Oh, boy. Was yeah. there lube dripping off of it? <laughs> was it a scratch I and sniff? No. <laughs> not a anyway, so sniff. speaking of Taking King, I also heard that they are getting rid of the voice of the ghosts of Peter Dinklage. And Everybody, off. take a second. Take a second. Hats off, guys. <laughs> hey, thank you, Zippo. Taps. <laughs> to everybody who out there actually did care a little bit, Peter Dinklage is no longer the voice of Ghost. Is, are they going to replace it or just get rid of it? Well, here's the story that happened. So apparently, and I'm not sure where they got their, you know, this came from, but they brought in legendary voice actor Nolan North to voice the ghost. Oh, Nolan the, North. Yeah, yeah. Nolan huh. North. A lot yeah. of people should know him from his uh, works on animated movies and films and TV series. Also, he's done a lot of gaming voiceovers. Can you? Drake. 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 Okay. Oh, Drake is his most famous. Gotcha. Also, All right. for you know, you Bill Wrights, you should know this. He was the voice of Penguin. In Arkham Knight? In Arkham Knight. Gotcha. Nice. Also, another character in the DC Universe, Deathstroke. He voiced the Deathstroke on many occasions. His biggest one was the Son of Batman animated feature. Go buy it. 
Well, nice. Yeah. You know, that's uh, yeah. I heard what they're doing actually is that get your licks in now for the Peter Dinklage voice because they're going to re-record the entire ghost for everything in the beginning Already of Destiny. Already done. Already done. Already Nolan, done. See, he did such a great job. The day after he finished, they go, they came back to him and says, re-record everything Peter Dinklage did. Did they just hate I, what I Peter Dinklage did I know, that I don't, much? I don't, I don't, I don't or... get that. A lot of people say that they, you know, a lot of people hated Peter Dinklage as the as Ghost because they felt he wasn't, you know, good enough for it. But in my mind, it's like I feel that you know his voiceover work did a, was all right. You know, it was okay for you know first time into that world. But I also feel that Bungie kind of screwed him over. By just programming him to be in the worst places and say the worst thing at the worst time to make you hate him. <laughs> so maybe this was a ploy. Maybe this was espionage from the get. But Could be. If you are you know, a somewhat fan of Peter Dinklage in this game, go play Destiny now before taking King Drops on September 15th. Because once it does... Thank you. <laughs> oh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not a, a Destiny player, per se. I've been kind of... I'm not a Destiny player, per se. I've been kind of uh, just dabbling here and there at my buddy's house because I don't own the game. He has just the regular Destiny, and I don't know if he has any of the add-ons or anything like that. But if I was to want to become invested in the game, what what would you recommend somebody who wants to get involved with the game Destiny? Would you recommend buying the new game now or buying the old game and the new game i mean I'm, how much do i have to put in for money wise to start you know being actively involved that is a great question and by the way everybody silky smooth our producer like, our producer great guy great voiceover <laughs> guy he god you're i'm sorry i heard your voice the one day on our podcast i know it made me want to just punch myself in the face <laughs> i'm sorry it did it's it like did. we're cindy Lauper and he's barry white out of jealousy of course <laughs> out of very good jealousy yes but if you want to get invested with you know destiny nowadays and you don't have it you know there is a version out there i think it's it's around 60 bucks and it's going to include the taken king with the original and the dark below and House of Wolves, yeah. Thank you. House of Wolves. Wow. House of Wolves. God, I got to go home and sleep, guys. I'm getting old. <laughs> so you could spend, and it, it's not a bad investment. It's the price of a game. Um, but it's, yeah, because now it's actually a full game with Taken King. No, uh, Yeah. <laughs> but now, but the problem with that one is it's, it's digital only. And I know that doesn't sound like a big problem to everybody, but, you know, there are some people still out there that like to collect discs. I'm one of them because I just like to see that I have it. You also could run out of room on your PlayStation 3 yeah, or too. 4. Well, no, quick. it's going to install regardless. And also you need PlayStation Plus as yes. well, right? Yes. You're going to need an active PlayStation Plus if you want to access all the really cool stuff. You know, you want to get into the Crucible, which leads into the Iron Banner. Also, you know, playing the Prisoner of Elders and most likely going to be this new Court of Oryx. You're going to need PlayStation Plus. But you still can go out and do the story. And do patrols and do all those mission, you know, all the little bounty missions without actually having PlayStation Plus. So if you're if you want to get into it, but you don't want to fully invest in a year of three months, a year of PlayStation Plus, you can still get in and play the story of it. So on the topic of Taken King, I'm mm -hmm. curious: have they actually settled what the new level cap is going to be yet? Forty. So it is a massive jump from this. What are you guys at now? Forty. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. 34. And the other ones all went up by two, so this mm -hmm. one going up by six is uh, it's a pretty big, pretty jump. big jump. And re just actually yesterday too, also in Gamescom, Bungie's at it again and re rearranging everything. There is no more light level. Wait, so, what? Yeah, this is Bungie's. Yeah, I'm not gonna quote it for quote because I don't remember it because I don't have a good attention span anymore. But Bungie felt that with the light levels. They felt that gamers weren't, you know, they were getting the gear, the armor, that made them the best. They weren't necessarily getting the armor that they liked. Like me, I'm a fan of the whole fast set for the Titan. But I had to wait till I could get Etheric Light to get jacket up to being max level. So now Bungie is going to completely throw that out the window and go back to a traditional leveling system. Good, it's about Starting time. you off where you were? Yes. Okay, so if you were, th so what happens if 
you go into Taken King and you're wearing gear that you were level 31 and there's is a Taken to account all the gear that's on your entire account. From what I can from what I can tell, they're going to basically look at where you are currently with your light level and they're going to adapt that and put it back into your character as a normal level. So basically they <clears throat> add the EXP thing factor in there. So now people can wear whatever they want with the abilities they want, <clears throat> and they're just killing monsters and, and enemies. I mean, killing enemies, just getting the EXP, because that's the way it should be anyway, so. Exactly. You know, because I like the looks. You know, I like my purple and gold warlock, so. Oh, and I yeah. like that your level's not attached to whether or not you get a lucky drop or not. Mm -hmm. See, I like my armor that's assless. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. City radar's going off, everybody. Has the ass chaps. All right. <laughs> Moving on, though, what I'm very curious about, and I'm not even a Minecraft player at all. You should be. Is yes. what is this whole Windows 10 Minecraft about? All right. So for those of you that don't know, um, Minecraft is a game. Uh, was originally uh, written and developed by Mahjong. And uh, recently, uh, I would say probably about six months ago, uh, Microsoft bought them out. How much? Uh, I think it was like six billion. Mm -hmm. It was uh, incredible, it was incredibly big. And uh, you know, on that note, the reason they bought it out is because they were so close to cross-platform compatibility. They had versions of Minecraft on uh, portable, on Android, on iOS, on uh, PlayStation on Xbox, they had it everywhere. And while it was kind of a dumbed down version, it was they were just literally like on the verge of being able to start connecting all the versions. And Microsoft has been trying to do that forever. They've been trying to get this whole like, oh, play on the Windows, play on the Xbox, you know. So they uh, bought them out because it was their key in, into that world. And uh, the child of that connection was the Minecraft Windows 10 beta and basically what they've done is they found the least common denominator between the PlayStation, the Xbox, the you know everything and they've made a game that you will now be able to play with people that are on their phones or people that are on Xbox. Uh, it's not on PlayStation it's because you know it's their <laughs> competitor. <laughs> um, but now I actually tried this out with uh, with my daughter. I had her get onto her Minecraft account on Xbox. She got in there. She got she played. She opened up a world. I connected to it with my Windows 10 Minecraft 10 beta and joined her while I was on the PC. Now there's there's a whole world of things to talk to about this. The first thing is that's amazing, but man. PvP is going to suck because, I'm sorry, but Xbox people and, well, ga uh, console gamers in general, you stand no chance against somebody with a mouse and keyboard when you have a controller. That, so that so PvP is going to be a little bit... Uh, PC, the PvP is going to be a little bit off kilter for a while. But uh, one of the other benefits is it's now using C++ instead of Java for those that care. Uh, Java's been kind of riddled with security holes lately, and with it being on C++ and on the actual in, in the actual Windows code, you no longer have to download, you know, keep your Javas up to date and have multiple Javas, and it, that was getting to be a pretty big headache. So that's a pro. Another pro is that the game is now going to be able to set the standard for the rest of the games so all the games will be at the same level. One of the biggest cons, however, and this and this is just absolutely, if you've ever played Minecraft for more than a month and you're not like big into the PvP stuff, one of the first things that will start to happen is you'll get bored. I mean, it's a sandbox. You just, you sit there, you play it, you go, this was fun, I built a castle, I'm moving on with life. Well, to get past that hump, the community had just came out with tons of mods from tech mods to magic mods to questing mods to just all, like all these crazy things there's youtubers that do them there's i mean there's just a huge community when it comes to that stuff c++ 
notoriously difficult to mod for. Also, it's the game is the dumbed down version of Minecraft, and so therefore it's like light years behind where Minecraft was. They dumbed it down to where the other ones were. So there's no modding for it. There's no community for it. There's no uh, third-party servers that are going to be allowed for it. Um, you can buy a server through Microsoft, but you can't actually set up your own server. So it kind of destroys it. It puts all the everything in in uh, Microsoft's hands and takes it out of the communities, which sucks because the community is so great. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Microsoft, <laughs> for monopolizing the uh, video game industry doing that because uh, that's like a bad thing to do, actually. Like, yeah, you live because a lot of gamers, especially when it comes to PC years, one of the always the biggest things I always see is that they like to uh, mod or make things interesting for. Uh, everybody, so that everybody could share it, you know, you know, like, hey, look what I did. Hey, look what I did. So there's always this, like, cool thing, but when the, doing this kind of limits the creative mind of gamers and, you know, you know, people who want to make good things like this for everybody else to enjoy. So I feel yep. like that, even if I wanted to play Minecraft or play this, that's a huge takeaway because I love creative creativity the most. Yep. Bill, Bill, do you think they'll be able to? Like, uh, I, I know when people get set their mind to it, they'll be able to do pretty much anything they want, but do you think they're going to be able to at least uh, exploit C++ a little bit just to be able to do that? Or is Microsoft going to try and keep a cap on it? Or are they afraid of exploits? Or w what do you think? Well, here's the thing. Um, the Right now, the Minecraft Windows 10 beta, or the Windows 10 version of Minecraft, isn't the only version of Minecraft. The Java version is actually still around, and so right now they just put out a bunch of uh, screen, a bunch of uh, updates for their 1.9 version that's coming out. The question is whether or not Microsoft will allow that branch to continue living. Um, that's really the big question because you'd, you'd be surprised. It's kind of two different worlds. A lot of the younger kids will play on Xbox and will play on the phone and they don't know the difference. But once you get older and once you want to actually, get, you know, do interesting things with Minecraft, you really have to be, you have to get into modded Minecraft to do so. So the, if they keep that open, I think everybody will be happy. I think as long as they keep development of the two separate, but uh, if for some reason they kill off the Java version and decide that they want to monopolize it and not allow an open source, um, that could get pretty. Uh, that could be the end of Minecraft, in my opinion. But how would they be able to like kill it off, so to speak? Can I mean, because I have it on my my laptop and I don't connect, I don't update it or anything like that. <clears throat> Can I just keep that? Yeah. As Java and have all my, my mods to it and still play it? Yes. Uh, yes and no and yes. <laughs> yes, thank you for answering that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So uh, right now, <laughs> right now when you sign into Minecraft, you actually go through Mojang. So um, you could actually get a server and you could actually turn that off but it opens up you up to all sorts of vulnerabilities and stuff. I mean, I literally I had it off because their authentication servers were down for a couple of weeks and had somebody come in and rickroll me. <laughs> and one of my I mean they like wiped out half my house and left a bunch of rickroll a bunch of signs up with the rickroll song on it. Down. So uh, it was yeah, it's at that point it's pretty much, you know, everybody can access it. if they know the IP address, if they figure out the IP address and they know you have a server, you can't do anything to really stop them. You can try whitelist and blacklist, but there's a lot of really easy ways to get around those. So, um the answer is yes, you could do it, but it kind of becomes the wild wild west at that point. And also, a lot of people kind of sit on the edge of like, oh, well, what's coming out next because Minecraft is ever evolving and they're always kind of adding some really nifty stuff and you know 1.9 seems to be you know like the next gen and everybody's like oh okay cool now I'm gonna bring my mod over into here but like if they kill it off there's no real reason to like progress to change things and I, at that point I feel like it gets stagnant and kind of dies away and if that dies away I don't see the the Minecraft 10 uh, the Minecraft Windows 10 version taking off, uh, hmm. except for little kids. You know, uh, 
everybody sees Minecraft as a little kid game. It really is until you get into the mod community. Gotcha. Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. You look so awake right now. Yeah, no, sorry guys. I'm yeah, I'm drifting fast. Not nothing you said though. Nothing you said. But um so basically with you know, with this new Minecraft, you know, what are you gonna say? Are we, is this something people should be investing in or should we start the revolution and keep Java alive? If you it depends on where you were in your Minecraft universe. Let's say I'm let's say I'm about to pick it up. If you're about to pick it up oh, see if you're about to pick it up for your kids. I would say absolutely. I would say any grown adult that wants to play a real video game and is looking to play Minecraft for more than a week or two before getting bored, I wouldn't even bother touching it. Not at least for another couple of years, not until they bring it up to where the Java version was at. And it's funny you mentioned that because when you were talking about it, I'm thinking in my head, because I, I, I got it, my uh, nephew got it for me for Christmas, so I was playing it. And man, it was great for the first week, and then the second week it was like okay, and then and then it just hit, it was just like I hit into it. I'm like, wow, I am, this sucks. I'm bored, and I I haven't played since. And it's it's funny you mention that that it just it hits a point where you're like, okay, I've 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 explored all this shit. I've I've dug to the yeah. whatever the hell that stuff is down. Bedrock. And, that's it. And <laughs> and I've also been into the, even my well my nephew helped me cheat. Went to it. the end. I, or I went through that little portal thing and got to the red oh, place. Oh, it's another. Yeah, because, you know, I'm totally technical with all that. That The red place, it does all that stuff. That actually, red place. But actually then actually I just story? was like, Bleh. But my nephew has been playing it for two years straight, man. He absolutely loves it. And he doesn't do the mods, but he's just he goes on to this thing and he does all these yep. challenges and stuff, and that's fine. But I'm like, wow, that's freaking boring. It's like Legos. It's yeah. like imagine when you're a kid, you can have all sorts of fun with just the regular Legos. But as you get to an adult, you want themed Legos. You know, you want to be able to have the Star Wars Legos to put together or something. Adult but if somebody Legos. just dumped a bunch of Legos in front of you, I mean, you could maybe, you know, keep yourself, you know, enthused for about 30 minutes. But after that, you're just, all right, this is boring. Let's move on. Mm. Just like this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't be shaking your head, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's wrap. Yeah, we gotta wrap this up today because I, I don't know. But um, you know, just kind of recap it. Half Life Three, revival possible? No. Nope. Uh, yes, oh. there it is. It's shelf. Believe me, there's a lot of development that has been made on it, but it's it's going absolutely nowhere. Okay. A leaked version is bound to come out sooner or oh. later. Yeah, I well, agree. There's enough modders out there. They'll make one. Yep. Dota 2, I still don't care. <laughs> nice. I only care about the money, guys. I only care about the no, money. No, nobody should be making that much money, especially if you're playing a fucking video games. game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Minecraft, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to call it my unity through stupidity. <laughs> I'm going to slap it. And can you say, can I slap this with shameful? Yeah. Guys, right, shameful. our first shameful video game. Oh, well, there's going to be another one of those. Oh, there'll probably be way then. more. Yeah, yeah there's going to be There's going to be more of them. I think there's a review you're going to be doing up. It's called Akiba Sh Trip? Yes. I am in the middle of playing Akiba Sh Trip Undead and Undress. And this is for <laughs> any... another shameful game, guys. Any, any anime gear. I cannot wait to tear into this one, but uh, I have whatever. a lovely words for you're it. You're killing me here. I don't even <laughs> want the nude patch for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the titty radar will be going it. off soon. All right, guys. Gamescom. This week, I'm labeling it a clusterfuck of awesome. All right, I like that. There's a lot of trailers out there that you need to check out, a lot of gameplay trailers, just a lot of information out there, guys. Like, this is stuff that E3 was missing, except for Fallout 4 data, because, well, everybody knew that. Nine. <laughs> Ten. All right, Nine. and then, Jay Zippo, can you give me one more? One more? Nine. Nine. Not that. Not oh. that. A little, little music for me. <laughs> Goodbye, Peter Dinklage. Goodbye, Peter Dinklage. I actually did appreciate you as ghost, and I left you a very nice image on our Facebook page. Please take a look at it. It's yours to keep. <laughs> as we just hit a dog. <laughs> All right. And next week, guys, guess what? Indie games. Yes, we're having our probably first and maybe only Indie Fest 2015. With Manwich. Yes, with the legendary, an enigmatic, in his own right, <laughs> Mikey Manwich. Maybe he'll wear his pajama top. 
That's awesome. I'm always yes. hoping for that or the duck shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a picture of this on the Facebook page, guys. Anyways, so that is it for Jay Zippo, Full Tilt, and hopefully the Bill of Rights will be here next week again to give us more information that will be snooze fast. And our Sorry. fearless lever. And our fearless lever. <laughs> Seriously, it's just water in here, guys. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you can see how tired I am today. I'm listening to Jay Zippo. But I am Kaiba. This has been the second review. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the second review. That is the number two with an N D. Guys, catch you on the flip side. <laughs>